How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at using an isomegalian chart. So that, you know, first question is, well, what is an isomegalian chart? It's basically just a chart that plots the size of larvae over time while accounting for environmental temperature. So as temperature gets warmer, the development speeds up so things grow quicker. And it takes less time for larvae to reach a particular size when it's warmer. So let's take a look at one of these isomegalian charts. So you can see on the y-axis you have the temperature. On the x-axis you have time. And for this one, the bottom one is in days and the top one is in hours. So you can use whichever unit you want. And they're really nice and put the temperature in Fahrenheit on this side as well. So taking a look at this, we have a bunch of lines here. So what's with these lines? You can see at the bottom of each line, there's a number. That number is corresponding to how many millimeters the maggot is. How long is that maggot based on those uh, the size? And you can see that as temperature goes up, all right, well, let's take a look at seven, just arbitrarily. At seven millimeters, if it's colder, it takes longer for the maggot to reach that size. Whereas if it's warmer, it takes a much shorter time to get to be that size. So using this chart, we can estimate, you know, how long would it have taken a maggot to reach that size based on the environmental temperatures. So let's do an example. It says, body was found in the woods by some hikers. Lucilia suricata were found on the body and collected with lengths of nine millimeters. So if I'm looking at this chart, I want to find the line for nine millimeters. So there it is, the nine millimeters right there. So I'm looking at this line. The average high temperatures have been 21 Celsius, which I look right here, that's this temperature right here. And the average lows have been 16 degrees Celsius, which is right here. So why, which temperature do I use? What, what do I do? You're not going to use one or the other, and you're not going to split the difference. So the way you're going to approach this is you want to end up with a time range. So if it was always, oh, that's in the wrong spot, 21 degrees, which is here instead of there, oops. If it was always 21 degrees, you want to follow that over till you hit that 9 millimeters line, which is like right here, and then look down, and that is like two and a half days. So if it was always as warm as the highs, it would take two and a half days to get there. So now, what about at 16 degrees? All right, so I do the same thing. I look over 16 degrees till I hit that line, which is like right here, and then I go down, and that gives me five days. So... At these temperatures, a high of 21 Celsius and a low of 16 Celsius, it's going to take anywhere between two and a half days to five days to reach that size. So this would be our post-mortem interval, our PMI, two and a half to five days. All right, so there's also isomorphin charts out there. And if, you know, don't let that confuse you. The only difference really is that, you know, morph means like what's, you know, shape technically. So if we're talking about development of flies, we're talking about what stage in its development is it. So we're looking at a chart that looks a lot the same, but the only difference is instead of saying how big is it, we're saying what form is it in. You know, is it in the egg? Did it just hatch? Is it Did it molt yet to go into the second instar? Did it molt the second time? Is it a pupa? Is it enclosed in its pupa? So it's instead of talking about how big it is, it's just talking about what form it's in. And that's how you use isomorphin charts. I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.